back to another video. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to be making a full Thanksgiving dinner all with Trader Joe's items. And we wanted to do this video because they have a lot of pre-made vegan options and we thought it would be nice to highlight them for those of you who don't love cooking, who don't have time for cooking, who or who just want to speed up your Thanksgiving dinner prep time. So this is like a lazy... Ish. Ish. There's still some work dinner. involved, yeah. So... It should be pretty fun. We had a lot of fun at Trader Joe's today, gathering everything. And, and finding uh, all the vegan items. Yeah, so one thing we couldn't find, and apparently it's discontinued, they used to have a vegan gravy, and it was not there anymore, and they said it was discontinued. discontinued. So that's so sad. I guess we'll note that. Um, um, we did find some items that are new to us that some people recommended. Also, we got these ridge cut potato chips seasoned with horseradish and chives that isn't technically for our dinner, but I wanted to include it because one of our followers on Instagram recommended it. I think and we'll be snacking on that as we cook. While we cook, yes. Yeah, I really hope that this video is helpful. I hope that you enjoy watching it, and I hope that you can try out some of these, I guess, recipes. They're still recipes to a degree, but it's gonna be much more simple than making everything from scratch. So I guess we'll highlight all of the items while we're cooking, just to speed up this video. Um, let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. Problem. Big problem. Uh, Not we, really, but we rookie mistake. Realized that this has chicken powder, broth. chicken broth in it. Um, we looked at the contained section and we saw that it only contains wheat and soy. So we're like, oh. And then it's I glanced. Vegan. I glanced over the ingredients, but it's rookie mistake. I'm so sorry, guys. So don't get the biscuits, the cornbread stuffing. We were um, really excited to. Uh, they did have a gluten-free one. I'm not sure if it's vegan or not, but it's one of the seasonings, chicken broth. Yeah. But we did get another stuffing, so we'll be making that, but we will be returning this item. The first thing that we're preparing is the Trader Joe's breaded turkeyless roast with gravy. And we didn't realize this had gravy. We were worried that the other gravy wasn't available, but luckily this has gravy. I don't know how much. We were about to make our own. Yeah, we were about to make our own. We have purchased this before, um, but I just don't remember. It's been a while, so we- Actually, we this was in our Turkey taste test. Taste test. Check that out. We'll, we'll link it down below. It'll be in the cards too. Oh yeah, that's Ooh. a lot. A hefty amount of gravy. So this um, you just thawed. It's just frozen, and then this we actually have to bake. We do want to mention that you're supposed to let this thaw for 24 hours, but we purchased it this morning and it has not been 24 hours, so we left it out as long as possible, and hopefully it's going to work. Um, I think it's gonna look the same, but it doesn't feel like frozen. So. No, it's it's definitely thawed. So I just wanted to mention that if you're going to make this, make sure you read the instructions. We always forget with the vegan roast. You're supposed to let them. A lot of them you have to defrost, and we always forget. What you're going to do is you're going to take your vegan roast, pop it onto a lined baking sheet, and just bake it according to the package directions. And then for the gravy, we're just going to thaw it in some hot water until it is um, warm through. The next thing we're going to make is some stuffed butternut squash and we're going to take the riced cauliflower stuffing and we're going to stuff it into some butternut squash. It's going to be very straightforward. So we're going to take our butternut squash and what I'm going to do is just cut them in half lengthwise, scoop out the seeds, and we're going to oil the butternut squashes, place them cut side down onto a lined baking sheet, and I'm going to pop them in the oven at 425 for about 30 to 50 minutes. These are small squashes, so I think they're going to cook pretty fast, but the cook time will just depend on how big your squash is. Next, we're gonna prep the stuffing that's going to go into the butternut squash. This stuffing is actually going to be prepped stovetop because it's already made, so I'm just going to heat some oil in a skillet, and then I'm going to add the stuffing and cook it for about seven minutes with the lid on stirring in occasionally, then I'm removing the lid and lowering the heat and stirring in occasionally until all the liquid evaporates, which is about four to five minutes, and it's done, super easy. We also have the ridge cut potato chips, the horseradish chive, you wanna try them? I'm gonna open it. We are big chip fans in this house. Spicy? Like, Does a kick. Could I do it? Yeah. Sorry for our chewing noises with our mics on. I realize you're cut off. Here, switch sides with me. That's like mm. horseradish. Oh, wow. That's good. That's spicy. It's almost like your nose is gonna start like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very sharp. Mm -hmm. If you don't like horseradish, do not. Once the squash is roasted, we're going to pull it out of the oven and using a spoon, it's going to be very soft. I'm just going to scoop out 
the inside and leave about half inch to an inch border and then I'm scooping about a half inch into the squash. It's really gonna depend on how big your squash is but I just say trust your own judgment based on how big your squash is and how much stuffing you have. And then all that's left to do is add the stuffing into the squash. The squash is still really warm, so what we did was we just warmed up the stuffing and added that in warm so that everything was warm, so we didn't have to pop it back into the oven since the squash is very soft already. We didn't wanna over bake it. The next thing that I'm going to be making is a butternut squash soup. So we got the holiday vegetable hash. This is butternut squash, sweet potato, red onion, celery, parsley, sage, and rosemary. So I'm going to add this to a pan with some oil and just cook it until everything is nice and soft. And I ended up putting a little bit of vegetable broth later on to kind of steam it to get it really soft. Then I transferred it to a high speed blender with some vegetable broth, salt and pepper. And I also have some butternut squash from the ones that we roasted because we had some left over there. Blended it until smooth and it made this really creamy and delicious soup. The next item we are working with is the harvest grain salad. And this one is very simple. All I'm going to do is put it in a bowl and it'll be ready to go. It's really cool that they have this option available. It is a small portion, probably meant for one person. Um, I didn't think about getting multiple of these, but it's cool that this is pre-made and if we were to have a party or something and we just really did not have time, something like this, you can just pop it into a bowl, mix it up and it looks, it looks pretty fancy. Honestly, it looks like we took a lot of time to make this, even though we literally opened a package and put it into a bowl. Next, we're gonna be prepping our sweet potato casserole and we're gonna be using the frozen mashed sweet potatoes from Trader Joe's. So first we're gonna add them into a saucepan with a little bit of water and we're gonna just let that cook down until the potatoes become nice and creamy. This is so cool how it cooks down. It's super easy. I really didn't expect it because it was in chunks at first. Next, we're gonna take it off the heat and then we're gonna add in our vegan butter, our brown sugar, a pinch of salt, and then some pumpkin pie spice and just mix that through. Next, we're gonna transfer our mixture into a casserole dish and we realized we should have gotten the candied pecans from Trader Joe's, but we didn't. But we did have just some raw ones in our pantry, so we crushed them up and we're just gonna sprinkle them over top here. And then we're gonna be covering it with a blanket of mini marshmallows that we also got at Trader Joe's. And fun fact, they are vegan by default. So it says it on the package, but very small, but all the Trader Joe's marshmallows are in fact vegan. So that's pretty cool. So once all the marshmallows are coating the casserole, we're going to pop it in the oven to broil until the marshmallows are nice and golden. And just be very careful not to burn the marshmallows with broiling. It's very sensitive. So it's a minute by minute operation. Next, we're going to prep a vegan green bean casserole. And we wanted to make this as easy as possible for you. Trader Joe's doesn't have a vegan cream of mushroom soup. And and instead of making our own cream sauce, we decided to experiment here and we grabbed the roasted garlic hummus from Trader Joe's and we're actually going to be watering that down with some vegetable broth, mixing in some black pepper and some fresh herbs and that's going to be our vegan cream sauce. And then in a pan, I just sauteed some diced onions until they were nice and soft, added in that cream sauce along with some steamed green beans and we're just going to mix that until everything is well combined. And this pan that I have is not oven safe, but if yours is, you can just continue on from here. But I'm going to transfer this to a casserole dish. Just pop this into the oven to bake. And then once it is finished, I'm going to pull it out, add the gourmet fried onion pieces from Trader Joe's on top, pop it into the oven for like five minutes more so that they warm through. And you have a hummus green bean casserole, delicious vegan and pretty easy to put together. Next, we are taking the organic French rolls from Trader Joe's and we wanted to not only warm them up, but kind of jazz them up a bit. So we are making some herb butter. This is simply melted vegan butter and we mixed in some rosemary, thyme and sage. Now I'm just going to brush them on top of the roll. And you wanna kinda of like scoop the herbs out of the butter to make sure that the herbs get on top with your pastry brush. I'm just gonna make sure everything is well coated. I made a little too much butter. I would probably half this, so I'll make sure to half it down below for you. And we are just going to pop this into our preheated oven at 350 for five to 10 minutes just depending on how long it takes for these bread rolls to warm through. This kitchen is getting more and more messy as this video goes on, as you can see. It is time for dessert, and this is the last recipe of the day. So we're going to be taking the pre-made Trader Joe's cinnamon rolls, and we're going to just chop those up into about six pieces each. 
Then we're going to toss those in a cinnamon pumpkin pie spice mixture. And I know that the cinnamon rolls already have cinnamon and sugar, but we're gonna add a little bit more because it makes it 10 times better. So we're gonna toss it with pumpkin pie spice and sugar. And then we're gonna add half to a greased bread pan. And then I made a mixture of melted butter and brown sugar. And I just whisked those together and poured half on top. Then I added the second half of the chopped up cinnamon rolls and then poured over the remaining butter brown sugar mixture. Then I'm going to just pop this into the oven until it bakes through and it gets nice and golden. And the last thing we're going to do is take the frosting that the cinnamon rolls came with and just drizzle that on top. And you have some sticky, sweet, beautiful vegan monkey bread. I'm currently editing this video and I totally forgot to mention the cranberry sauce in the video. So I'll put a photo right here. We purchased it at Trader Joe's and it's in our spread. It was good and I would definitely recommend you try it out. All right, we're finally eating, <laughs> it's 10 something. We have our plates here. It took us a while because we had to shoot photos and all that jazz. Mm. So we got our full plates and we're having full Thanksgiving dinner and we're going to- We also have some soup and salad over here. Yeah, for the soup, we topped it with some plain yogurt, red pepper flakes, black pepper, rosemary, and some sunflower seeds just to get it to look nice and pretty for the photos. This sweet potato pie, um, I was never really a big fan, but this is really good. Good. This bread with the herbed butter, mmm. I gotta try this casserole. Yummy. Mmm. How's the green bean casserole? It's good. Can you tell it's hummus? I don't think so. Really? It doesn't taste like a traditional casserole. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's still good. I guess you can kind of tell it's hummus. No, yeah. it's very garlic forward. Mm -hmm. It's yummy though. That I would good. eat that. The sweet potato casserole, sweet potato pie, I don't know what it's typically called, turned out awesome. It tastes so good and it was such little effort. Mm -hmm. You literally buy the pre-mashed potatoes, you put it in a pan and you just like season it up. You saw what happened. Yeah, so it's true, you saw what happened. <laughs> so yummy. This is really good too. The uh, mm. stuffing stuffed squash. I know we're just, oh, you can't, I guess you can't even see what we're eating. That's kind of, should we do this? Well, we're about to all yours. eat Thanksgiving dinner, but we hope that you enjoyed this video, that you can try out these recipes. We'll have all the information down below with all the Trader Joe's products we use and how we made every single dish. And we hope that this video could be helpful to vegans and non-vegans alike, to anybody really who wants to make a um, quick and easy. And pretty affordable. Not super quick, but easy. Quick-ish, super easy. Quicker. And relatively affordable. Mm -hmm. All right, um, thank you all for watching. And we'll see you soon. Bye.